have abandoned Philadelphia and are on the march to New York to redeploy their forces. The French are coming by sea. General Washington and his army have left Valley Forge. They're harassing Clinton's march, and spoiling for a fight. A wagon train of, of U.S. of American artillery has stopped for the night. The men are beginning to bed down. Come here, Private. You're part of my crew now. I command this piece. I give the orders. Too bad you weren't with us in Valley Forge to drill with the rest of the crew. But you'll catch up. I expect we'll engage the British soon. We can see British regulars falling to our guns as early as tomorrow. The downpour yesterday held us up, but it stopped the British too. We moved a fair piece today. We'll move into position tomorrow morning once someone figures out where that is. You get some sleep. The scene shifts to a ridge line. It overlooks what will be the battlefield. We see horses and men struggling to move the cannons up onto the ridge line. Good job, men. We're part of the main line now. We'll be firing over that hedge. That's Hayes' men down below us. Be ready. Get some water. It's hot as hell and the sun's only been up for an hour. The British march into view. They break from their columns into ranks and begin to form up to face the American militia. Man your stations now. Get ready. Come here, Private. I want to explain to you what we're doing. He points to, to the left rear of the gun. Number one is the firer. He maintains the lens stock. That's this staff with the match on the end. It sets off the charge. We're shorthanded, so I'm doing that job. Number two, he points to the right rear of the, of the, the gun. Number two tends, is the tender. He's responsible for blocking the vent while we're worming and sponging and ramming. That way no air, no draft gets in to set off the powder. He pierces the cartridge bag to expose the powder. And he primes the piece. Number three, he says, pointing to the right front of, of the, the gun. He's the sponge and ram man. That's the most dangerous job. He, he worms out anything that's left in the barrel. He sponges it. He rams home the cartridge of powder and the round. This is important because if there's anything left burning in the cannon to set off the powder, we're all dead. Sergeant Hayes over there, he's our number three. He's a good man. His wife Mary, she fetches water for us and helps us out. You can call her Molly Pitcher like the other men do. Don't give her any guff. Number four over there, he's the loader. He puts the cartridge in the muzzle so that it can be so the piece can be charged. He puts the round in the muzzle so the piece can be loaded. He helps to warm out the piece with the number three. Number five here is you. You're the powder tender. On my order, you move that powder box back before we fire and bring the round forward. You'll help me aim the piece with the tiller here. And when I tell you to, you'll fetch the powder back. You understand? Okay, get ready. The American artillery begins to fire on the British, round after round. The British respond. They move artillery pieces, cannon to the nearby hilltops. 
and began to engage the American artillery. Molly Pitcher fetches pitcher after pitcher of water to her crew and to the nearby crews. The ridge line becomes covered with smoke. The smell and the sounds of the battle are oppressing in the midday heat. It's one of the hottest days of the summer. Men are falling from, from gunfire. But there are also an equal numbers falling from heat stroke and exhaustion. Sergeant Hayes is down. Is he hit? His wife Molly's tending to him. Leave him be. You private, get more ammunition and powder. We've got to get this cannon back into the fight. Molly drags her husband into the shade and gives him some water. She looks back at the gun crew. And she picks up his staff with the ram and the sponge. And she moves back to the position. What are you doing there, Molly? Well, I reckon you know what you're about. Let's get this, this cannon ready to fire again. Molly swabs the, the cannon. The rest of the crew move their positions and begin to do their work. They continue to fire round after round in this artillery duel. It's the longest, most intense, and largest artillery battle in the war to date. The British are determined to displace the American artillery. The Americans are equally determined to stay in place and demonstrate that the drilling and training they did in Valley Forge made them every bit the equal of the British regulars. Molly reaches for a cartridge, and enemy cannon fire engages their crew. The cannonball goes between her legs and tears away the lower half of her petticoat. Lucky that wasn't a little higher, says Molly, as she continues to ram the charge home. And they fought through the afternoon, through the heat, as more and more men dropped in exhaustion, and more and more men on each side died from the cannon fire until the light began to fade, and both the British and the colonists began to settle in for the night. By the morning, the British had withdrawn. The Americans had demonstrated on the field of battle that they were finally every bit the equal of the British regulars. And the legend of Molly Pitcher was born. She's a real woman, not illusory, although she's not the only Molly Pitcher of the American Revolution. The Pennsylvania legislator <clears throat> voted Sergeant Molly a $40 pension later for her services during the war. She stayed with her husband from the time of his enlistment until the end of the war. And she was quite a popular local, local figure. A monument stands on the former battlefield tour. And every American artilleryman knows the story of Molly Pitcher. Thank you.